Now today I'm going to talk to you about batters with a good Yorkshire pudding or pancake batter we have the key to a number of first class dishes whether they be savoury or sweet from the humble toad in the hole to those delicious crepe Suzettes. We need to not fear making our batters thinner. In fact, I could say that the thinner the batter, the better the batter. There are, of course, some wartime recipes around at the moment, which is an eggless batter, but with the availability of dried eggs, there really is no reason why we shouldn't use eggs in some form or other in our batters. A shell egg is miles better than a dried egg because of course it catches and holds air. Which dried eggs, a wonderful product though it is, of course cannot do. So if you do have your own chickens, then use them if you have eggs freely available. But for those of you who haven't got your own hens, whose one egg at present is so hard to make a good use of, I'm going to, excuse me Jeeves, I'm, I'm going to show you a very good recipe using our dried eggs. Now, first of all, I've been reconstituting two dried eggs with four tablespoons of water ready to add to my Yorkshire batter. Now, I'm going to use self-raising flour for this, measuring out four ounces. And I'm going to pop that into my bowl ready to mix. Give it a sift first with a good pinch of salt. Of course with the dried eggs get as much air as possible as you can into your mixture, always giving your flour a good sift. Now let's get rid of those last lumps it has been a really really damp winter this year and then make a well and then gradually add your reconstituted egg using either a fork or a whisk you gradually add your liquid. Now I'm using half a pint of milk and water. Don't forget when you're rinsing out your, your milk bottles you can always save the bottle rinsing as milk and water and if you're using milk or liquid in a recipe with any egg whether it be shell egg or dried egg, always give the bowl a little rinsing so that you don't waste any of the egg at all. Now with your whisk, gradually beat in the milk and the egg and when it's all in make sure you beat it very well. Now after you've given it a good beating, let it rest for between one to two hours so you can go off and prepare some of your other food whilst it's sitting and resting. So I'm now going to pop this in the pantry and make sure I close the door otherwise I know that naughty jeeves will get up there and lick my batter mix. He so misses his milk now. Now for those of you who don't want to 
fritter away your shell eggs or your powdered eggs and is milkless too is a recipe for meat fritters using that tinned meat that our American chums are sending us over. Just sieve four ounces of plain flour, a pinch of salt into a bowl, make a well and add two dessert spoons of salad oil and a gill or quarter of a pint of warm water. Mix until smooth, beat until light, leave overnight even a little bit longer if possible before using it to coat the tinned meat. Delicious! When you've rested your batter, grease a pudding basin well. Chop several dates, pop them in the bottom of the pudding basin And if you have oranges coming into the home, grate the rind of one orange, sprinkle that over and the juice over the top of the dates and then a handful of sultanas or raisins or mixed fruit. If you have no oranges some orange squash or the syrup from a tin of fruit to the same quantity of an orange will do. Now your batter is ready. Add that one tablespoon of hot water and stir in and pour over the fruit in the bottom of the basin. Cover and steam for an hour and a half. A best pudding using batter and dried fruit Serve with a little bit of custard. Delicious.